Okay, we're gonna do a two-point pull-down perspective construction today. This is a bit of an old-school system that architects and interior design designers tend to prefer over building grids because it's a very direct and quick system and your perspective space uh, is generated very, very quickly from this uh, process. Um, so, let's get started. If you have a floor plan, If you have a floor plan, such as this uh, interior uh, conference room and lobby uh, existing space, uh, you may need a perspective view of some sort. And one of the hardest things for people to do is figure out what do they want to be focusing on. So if I'm looking through the space towards the lobby waiting area, that might be a view that I want. Or I may want a view across the conference room towards the reception area. Or I maybe want to imagine sitting over here in the waiting area looking across the conference room. All those are options. So it can be a little bit disorienting or challenging to figure out how to place that into a grid. So this system gives us a really direct method for controlling that and doing that very quickly and then deciding if we want to keep going with that view that we're building. So I've created it on the side, I've created a little what I call a viewfinder. It gives us a station point, draw a vertical line, that's called our sight line. And then off of that center, at 30 degrees left and 30 degrees right, and also at 45 degrees and 45 degrees left and right, this gives us basically what would we be focusing on? What would be our view? What are we looking at? 45 degrees is where the drawing will start to distort, perspective will distort a lot, but it's okay, we can still build that space. It just helps us navigate when we slip the drawing under there, what do I want a view of? So if I set up where my station point is here, or if I slide it a little bit and imagine I'm sitting in this chair or this sofa in the lobby waiting room, I'm looking through the conference, uh, into the conference room, and let's imagine that this is a glass wall across here and not a solid wall. I have a view now through the glass window. That means I'm going to have a view of the landscape and the distance. And I can see I'm going to have this column off to the left, and I'm looking pretty much straight across the conference room. That may be a view that you want. Or you may want to switch it and imagine you're coming through the front door, and you want a perspective, something like that, right? So this little viewfinder helps you kind of establish where you're standing and where you're positioned. In this system, you do not have to be inside the room. If I need to get both the conference room and the lobby in my view, I could be standing out here in the hallway, okay? One thing you wanna remember is that from your station point, there's a zone out in front of here where you won't be able to build the perspective. It's too close to the viewer, okay? And all of that depends, that distance totally depends on the scale of your drawing that you're working from. On a smaller drawing, this is a lot closer to the station point. On a bigger drawing, it's a lot farther out. Make sense? So just something to keep in mind. So if I lay this back over the, the drawing and I imagine I'm sort of in the waiting area here and I'm looking across the space, there's at least, at least this much space that I'm not gonna be able to construct the drawing, just realistically speaking. So my focal point is really the wall coming towards us and the wall in the distance and really the conference room in this view. Make sense? So if you like that view, go ahead and tape those together. I'll just put a couple pieces of tape here and here on the sides. And then what you want to do is you want to look at where the back corner of your space is. So I don't define this as my back corner. I call my back corner the farthest corner away from me. And you're always looking for the perpendicular geometry, the back wall versus the side wall in this case. You want to set your sight line vertical. So I'll just take my T-square, my triangle. I want to set that vertical effectively like that. And I want to be within the camera view here, so I'm going to move this up a little bit. I've given myself some markers. Hopefully I don't blow it. I think I'm within the camera view still here. And I'm going to need a line across the back here, right where my pen, pencil is set. And that line is going to come off of this back corner of the inside of the room. Make sure you're on the inside of the room. I'm highlighting it here in blue. You make sure you're on the inside of the room and not the outside geometry of the building. There's no sense for that, for an interior drawing, right? So I'm just kind of looking at where I'm at in the position. I think that's a pretty good place to be right now for my drawing. So I'm going to tape that down. 
And now I can lay some trace paper over the top of that. You shouldn't feel precious about this early construction work because it's just for getting set up, getting a drawing, getting an underlay going. Um, And then you'll use that drawing as an underlay uh, for your sort of your final work up the road. Hmm. I need to do something here before I get set up. One thing I can see is that my back wall in this case is at a very shallow angle. And what that's going to do is put my vanishing point very far off to the right. So I'm going to reposition this off to the left. Okay. You'll see why in a second when I get reset up here. Or when we get when we get the system moving along a little bit further. So I'm just gonna reset. Again, sight line is vertical, perpendicular to our picture plane. And now I'm back in business. My other wall I'm less concerned with because this angle is very steep relative to my station point, relative to what will be my picture plane back here. Okay, so that's going to put a vanishing point down here, very close and in, inward. All right. And if all that sounds cryptic because I haven't taught you that yet, that's okay. I'm going to walk you through it. I'm just pre-planning where my, my layout's going a little bit here. The more you do this process, the better you get at it, the easier it gets. And you can use it, and within 10 minutes, 5 minutes, you can decide whether like, you like that view or you want to change your view or anything. Okay. All right, so we're taped down. I hope you can see the drawing through the trace paper. I'll try to press it down from time to time. First thing we want to do is, again, locate the back corner of the room, which is right here where my pencil tip is. And I'm just going to strike a nice, long, horizontal line right there. Down below, anywhere I have space down here is where I'm going to build my perspective, OK? So if this is all in the way, I could put some paper under there. I could cut it, whatever. but. Hopefully we'll be able to see it through the camera. Let me see if I can put a little white paper under there. I'm going to mask out part of that drawing there. There we go. The only thing I need to carry over is the station point, so I'm going to highlight that. Hopefully that shows up in the camera. And I'm going to kind of block out everything else so that hopefully this is a little bit more white for the camera. All right, so down here is where my horizon line is going to be, parallel to the picture plane. So let me write PP for picture plane. Down here is the horizon line. It could be anywhere you want. Again, it's just for getting the drawing set up and getting the ball rolling. You want to want to imagine where's your horizon line, where's your eye level in the space, how much floor are you going to need, how much ceiling are you going to need. That's going to help determine whether you need to add paper or whatever. I need to make sure that I'm within about this line uh, for the camera view. So I need to draw this a little bit higher up here than I would maybe normally. So this is my horizon line. Okay, so now the, what we want to do is take this back corner of the room, and my plan here is at um, three eighths of an inch. Three eighths inch equals one foot zero inches. Okay, that just happens to be my plan. You could do this at eighth inch scale or quarter inch scale, whatever you want, whatever works for your paper size. Off of the back corner of the room, you carry that corner straight down across your horizon line. Okay. This corner of the perspective, this edge of the perspective, is the only time that the perspective is at the same scale as the plan. So I use my architectural scale. Grab that. 3 8 inch scale is right here. And I like to use a 5 foot eye level. So I set my 5 at the horizon line, and I come down 5 feet. I like to use a 5 foot eye level because I think that's pretty typical of the average person's height. And then I'm going to come up, and we're going to use a 10, or sorry, a 12-foot ceiling light height for this space uh, as a standard or a set. If you have a higher ceiling, then you would just draw it higher. So right here, I have zero feet. That's the, going to be the floor. The horizon line is at five feet. I know that these numbers are probably pretty small in the video, but I'm calling them out so you know. And then this is 12 feet up at the top. We need a couple more things now for our perspective. We need vanishing points. So this is the step that kind of hangs people up a little bit. 
Vanishing points come off of the major geometry of the room. So in this case, it's here and here, the back wall and the left wall, you could say. Okay? So what I want to do is line up my triangle. I'm using this color triangle. Well, it's too small. I want to line up this triangle to the left wall. And I'm just looking at the angle. So I'm really just setting this, aligning that edge with the angle. There's nothing magical here. And then I butt this against that triangle, and if I slide this along that line, this edge is parallel to the wall. So then I come over to the station point, and I carry that line from the station point to the picture plane. And that right there, that intersection, will then go down to the horizon line to my, be my vanishing point. Perpendicular to that will be the back wall. So all I did is I held this steady, oh, and I have bumped it a little bit, so I'm going to reset it. So I'm now lined up to the back wall. I slide that over to the station, uh, station point. I'm going to switch my triangle so I have a longer triangle this time. Okay, so I'm lined up to the back wall geometry. Slide that over to the station point. It's basically right there. And where that intersects the picture plane is going to be where the left vanishing point comes down to the horizon line. Okay? So once I have those two marks, I'm ready to bring my vanishing points down to my horizon line. So the left one is here. That's my left vanishing point. My right vanishing point is over here. And again, the vanishing point's not here on the picture plane. You've got to come down to the horizon line, okay? So vanishing point R right there. Once you have those two and you have the back corner of your room, you go through the zero of the floor from the right vanishing point and you come forward. Now you could go back in space too. Say you're going to add a balcony or a terrace or some landscape outside. You can go back toward the vanishing point too. But a lot of times for interior design, you don't really need all that. So you might want to concentrate your view here in the foreground. Um, the left vanishing point is over here. So I go through the zero. That's where that wall is. If I need to extend that line, you can block it and slide this over, and then my line is longer. So if you're working with smaller triangles, uh, that's one way to work. You can also flip your T-square upside down and you know, line it up that way. So I can come up here to my left vanishing point. Through the ceiling is 12 feet. So there's my ceiling line. So what I have already is a representation of the left wall, which is this wall over here. And I have the representation of the back wall, which is the glass wall in this case, which is over here. Down here is the floor plane. That weird triangle is the floor plane. Up here, this weird triangle is the ceiling plane coming out towards us. Okay? This is not for introduction to perspective. So anybody who's watching this video and thinking that this is like where you start, you probably need to start at, uh, some simpler, more basic things first. Um, so now the qu what we want to do is start to locate some objects, like maybe this wall, or maybe these columns, or maybe these, uh, these glass mullions, uh, window frames along the back wall. We want to start to give this some life, that we can start to find ourselves in this. Starting with the curve would be very difficult, but we could start with where this hallway is. This is a hallway over here. So let, that corner is a good corner to start with. So now we have a routine, which is really, really easy when you get the hang of it. The routine is, I have my walls, I can trust that. I have this left wall, I have the back wall. Those are things that I can define based on the edges, the floorboard edges and the ceiling plane edges. For this corner, I need to take into consideration foreshortening in order to get it down here into the perspective. So I go to my station point, I go through this corner on that wall, connect the station point to that corner. The only thing I need is where it crosses the picture plane, so right there. And then I bring that point down into, my, down into my perspective. So that actually comes down here. Okay? So the hallway, which goes off to the left, is built off of that back wall, which means it's built off of the left vanishing point. So I can come over here to my left vanishing point, and that hallway goes off in that direction. So the geometry is going off in that direction. So this representation right here is parallel to that back wall. Make sense? So let's locate the other side of the hallway, which is this corner. 
So again, the same routine, which is really nice about this system. So I just go through the process. Station point through that corner where it crosses the picture plane, I can now come down into my perspective drawing. And that comes down all the way over here. We're way deep in, in the foreground here, so that's okay. I'm gonna continue this line of the ceiling in the foreground here. Switch back to my blue pencil for that ceiling line. I'm trying to do the main geometry of the drawing in blue. Sort of get the ball started and then the graphite for the other stuff that we're building in. So where's that hallway? So this is all ceiling now through here. And that hallway continues right here, right? So it actually disappears behind that edge right there. And on the floor, disappears behind that edge right there as well. But that's the hallway. So this is the floor plane. And that's it. That's the distance or the depth of the, of the conference room in this case, based on our perspective system. OK? So now let's locate these window mullions, because that's nice, uh, a nice way to kind of start to flush out this back wall. So I'm going to just locate one of these mullions, or you could even do the center lines of the mullions, um, and go from there, and then just kind of uh, eyeball the width of the mullions. So station point, station point through the center of the mullion crosses the picture plane. I'm going to go ahead and do several of them at the same time to save myself time. Right there. And I've ignored these two because they're hidden behind these columns. So I'm not going to waste my time with those. So I see that this first mullion intersection right there, it means it's going to cross the glass. That's the glass right there. The other one is right here. The next one is right there. And the next one is right there. If I wanted to locate this wall, where the wall is on the glass, I just look at where it meets the wall, which is right there. Station point through that point to the picture plane. And if we're doing everything right, we should wind up with this wall to the right to the right of our vanishing point. And you can actually see that. There's our station point. We look across the space. There's our vanishing point. This wall should be to the right of that. So we go through there, and I come down into the perspective, which is down here. And it's to the right of the vanishing point. I can actually see that wall standing right here. I can actually see that wall. So off of the right vanishing point, I come outward in space. There's the far right wall. And that wall is coming out towards us over here to the, to the far right of the space. Make sense? Now I can see something here. This wall is lined up straight across to the other hallway. So I now have an, another anchor point here. I don't need to use the station point through there and go through that whole process again. I can just carry the geometry from here across my perspective. So I'm going to use my long straight edge, left vanishing point, line up with this wall. I can see I'm off of the page over here. I'm off of the viewer. But basically, that's the line across the floor. And I know that I'm off of the screen because of this blue line as the, the monitor. Um, up on the top, we might see it still up here at the ceiling. Oh, it's off. It's off the page also, way up there. Well, actually, that might be in the viewfinder still. So basically, that's where the hall continues over there. Make sense? Now, very dramatic geometry over here, which we should know based on our, station, our, our viewfinder down underneath here. When we look at that viewfinder, we realize the geometry is getting really radical out here. Outside of, that, outside of our vanishing points, this is our comfort zone in our view. Make sense? So every time we start to push farther, higher, deeper outside of those ranges, it's going to get kind of crazy. But it looks cool sometimes, too, so don't be afraid of it, OK? How can I locate the curvature on the floor? Let's build this curvature in. So I have a line, a guideline right here in the plan, but I also have that guideline on the floor, and I also have that guideline on the ceiling here. I'm going to finish that by sketching it. There it is, right? So I could actually, anywhere along here, I could put an, an, an anchor point, maybe at the center. We could do that. And now I'm going to tie that back to the line that I know, OK? The edge that I know. And now I can do what I know, station point through what I know to the picture plane. Where that intersects the picture plane, it can now come down 
into the perspective. That's on the ceiling right there. And on the floor, it may be out of the viewfinder again. It's really close to the viewfinder right there. What that does is give me that mark on the floor plane. So now I need to come outward to get to the arc. So from my right vanishing point, outward in space across the ceiling is like that. And I know this is off the screen down below. It's the same as up above. From off of the right vanishing point comes forward towards me. Now I can locate this point, station point through that point, to the picture plane where that point comes down and intersects the geometry I just created is right there. And I'm going to swing that all the way down to the floor, which is right there. And now I know that I have a big arc sweeping out towards us like this down below. And up above, I've got to get my body in the right position. It's something like this sweeping all the way out there. And the geometry might be stretching in this case. So our usual rules of ellipse logic kind of go out the window because the geometry of the grid being tweaked so far. But in a perspective where I'm just trying to set up the system, my end drawing may only focus in on this area anyway. Maybe I start to put a painting on the wall over here or a video display or some other kind of beautiful graphic thing. Right? I can start to develop the hallway over here. I can do the same thing in the conference room. I can start to develop, you know, maybe there's a, a flat screen display that's going to be in here in the conference room. And I can start to locate the conference table as well. So I can start to work directly off of what I have here. I can also start to build in these chairs. I have the center line down here on the floor. If I rotate a little bit like this, just eyeballing it even like that, I go back to my perspective rule. So if this is the front of the chair, then that's the vanishing point on the horizon line. Make sense? And I can use that to control the back edge of the chair. So there's the back edge of the chair. The far left, sorry, far right vanishing point may be off the sheet. That's okay. I'm just going to eyeball. And if you extend your paper, then you would have a little bit more. I know that this is off the edge of the page, so uh, or off of the viewfinder, so I'm going to just kind of bring it up into the view. There's the chair in the foreground, starting to build the vertical height of the chair. We know that a chair is 18 inches. The seat is about 17, 18 inches. 18 is very easy to eyeball. So I'm going to use I'm going to use one of these vertical legs of the chair. That's this one in the floor plan. One of these vertical edges. And I like open geometry. I always like open geometry. Perspective, when it gets really flat, you can't map the points. So I'm always looking for open geometry. I'm going to plot a distance, a line between the zero point here and one of these legs on the chair in the foreground. I like this leg. So I'm going to go from here to there, all the way back to the horizon line. So this is zero, zero in the foreground. That's zero, zero in the distance. And those draw a straight line across the floor or the ground all the way to the horizon line there. So that's a diagonal vanishing point relating to this chair in the foreground. If the seat is 18 inches, then I go back to my vertical measuring line. The back wall is my vertical measuring line. That's a foot. That's two feet. So halfway between there is 18 inches. Plot that point to the diagonal vanishing point and just carry the line forward. That's 18 inches in the foreground. So now I have a reference. My vanishing point for the chair is right there. I have a reference for the base of the chair. And I'll build off of the, the vanishing points to build out the block of that, the basic box. And if the chair has a seat back, now that's just a roughly, you know, an 18 inch high square. And if it feels like it's a little bit small, I can add a little bit of dimension to it, a little bit of thickness all around it, make it a little bit more, uh, a little bit more thick, whatever, more volumetric. And I can now also double any of these heights. I could double this leg and double that length, and I now know that I'm at 36 inches for a seat back. Make sense? And I'm just eyeballing the sketch at this point, right? And I'm using my vanishing point for the seat back. Most seat backs are not vertical, straight up and down like that, unless you're Frank Lloyd Wright doing really vertical, rigid kind of geometries from the, you know, 20th century, early 20th century. So most of our chairs are more comfortable than that. The seat back leans back a little bit. And I can angle the legs outward a little bit as well. And I can start to add a little bit of cushion height and things like that to start to design or add an arm. Or I can make this into a more comfortable chair and add thicker, 
thicker arms around it and build out my box, right? So that's how we can get some geometry or dimensions from back in the distance to the foreground. If I want to put in this drawing, there's some planter along here. In the back, there's a planter. So let's just say that the planter is two feet high. There's two feet on the back wall. So that makes it very easy to establish where my planter is going to be coming across the back wall. I come forward off of that a little bit from the right vanishing point forward. Right vanishing point forward. Now what I need to do is plot the dimension outward from the wall, which is back to my plan. So I can get this dimension from the from the station point through that intersection to the picture plane and then down into the perspective. So it's the same routine. Anytime I need a dimension off of the plan, I have to just uh, go back up to the plan and uh, station point and plot it down. So that little intersection is right there. That comes down and I've got enough geometry to build out the, the rest of this piece of cabinetry. Oops. The surface of it is like that, where it meets the floor is here, where it meets that wall is over there. And if I've done a good job, this little intersection up here and that one on the floor are going to line up. And so this is where all my, you know, there's like a little, you know, whatever terrarium of plants or something like that that somebody has to maintain every week. So you can kind of sketch in some ideas of flowers, you know. If this is glass out here, we live in Southern California, anybody who's watching this on YouTube. So I always like to use the reference of like maybe we have a nice beautiful ocean view and the waves as they lap into the sand make the sand a lot darker. You don't need to draw every, every wave to give the impression of waves. And out in the distance is Catalina Island. So if you live somewhere else, like in, in Boston, you want to draw Cape Cod off in the distance, then draw Cape Cod in the distance. If you live in Lake Tahoe uh, and you, you want a lake view and you've got the mountains in the distance, you can kind of imagine that, as Bob Ross would say, that happy little mountain in the distance, you know. So have some fantasy as you're sketching because it helps you define and decide what you're actually putting in there. So here's my planter. I'm just doing a really loose, rough idea of vegetation. I probably can start to put some cabinetry underneath here if I want. I might want to locate these columns. These columns are pretty easy to, to um, eyeball in there, but if you're not used to eyeballing it, then just go station point. Locate the point on the, uh, on the wall. You have to carry the geometry back to the wall. Locate the point on the wall. Station point through that point to the picture plane. Station point through, the pic through that point to the picture plane. That's the width of the column back there on the wall. Bring those points down. And there's the geometry on the wall back there. There's the geometry on the wall back there. And now that column comes forward into the space. So don't get confused between the cabinetry piece and the wall. The wall, the glass, the glass is the blue part. So here's the column sticking out from that glass. And now I need to figure out how long does that come out into the foreground. So I just go back here. There's the corner of the column. That's all I need. Now I've got the guidelines in the drawing. Station point through the corner of the column to the picture plane. Same routine. That gave me that little tick mark. That's the thickness of the column in the foreground. Off of the left vanishing point, I can finish out the box at the floor and at the ceiling. Trying to keep my head out of the camera so I, my geometry is not spot on because I can't really see the line over the triangle. Close enough. There's our column sticking on the foreground. The other column I know is going to be over here on the right. So I can carry the depth of this column right there. That's the depth. I know there's going to be a guideline there. And I'm going to do the same thing at the ceiling over here. There's going to be a guideline for that front edge of the column over there. And now I just need to locate where along those lines is it. So station point. In this case, I'm going to go right there. Boom, it's right there. 
and then that comes down. I could have done both edges at the same time. It would have saved me a little time. Right across there. Really dramatic triangle, triangular angularity in the perspective, but it is what it is. The other corner of the column, the width of the column, you could say, is right there. We're going to see a lot of stretch out here. We know that because of the, the grid or the, the system. Whoops. So that's the width of the column here in the foreground on the right. I'm going to shade that in a little bit so you can just kind of see it. going to block Catalina back there. It's also going to be blocking the planter right there where we're going to and then the other column is over here. Sort of sketching the rendering these in a little bit helps you see what you've got and make out your work a little bit sometimes. Okay? So how can we locate this conference room table? Where do we locate that? Well, I know that the length is here, so I can carry that length back to the glass wall. Right? I can also bring the width or the depth of it over to the left wall. And now I've got four anchor points that I can bring down. And if you see it in two anchor points or three anchor points, then take the shortcuts, you know, as long as you've got the right geometry. So the length of it is over here. And if you need to make little marks like circles or anything like that to help kind of tag and nomenclate, uh, is that even a word, nomenclate the, the marks. As you get more marks, it's hard to keep track of what you've got. That's okay. So I'm circling these now. I'll use arrows later, little plus signs, little minus signs, whatever you need. So those are my four cardinal points that I need now down here in the perspective. Keep track of which ones go to which walls. So these two go to the left wall over here. There's a couple marks on the left wall. Uh, these two over here go to the right wall, the glass wall. And now I've got all the cardinal geometry I need. From the right vanishing point, I come out from the right wall. There's a guideline across the floor there and there. And off of the left vanishing point, there's the guideline across the floor there. Look at the floor representation. That's, where, that's how much floor there is behind there. So that's where these other chairs are going to be and things, right? It's going to get a little tight in there, but nonetheless. Where's the center for this arc? Well, I can bisect corner to corner. I can always use that geometry. So I don't have to, um, I can go back to some of those fundamental geometries, find the center line here, bisect the plane. There's the center point of the plane. So now I can come off of the left vanishing point through that center line. That's the center of the arc. And over here, behind the chair is the center line of the arc. So now, I'm going to use my ellipse logic. Now normally I would say use, you know, uh, square up your ellipses vertically or the minor axis is vertical. But far out in the perspective system here, it's actually okay if your ellipse leans. So that's the table on the floor. We need to get this table up here, right? So we go back to the vertical measuring line, one feet, two feet, three feet. Typical table is about two and a half feet or so, right? 30 inches, maybe is a little high. So go back to the back wall, one feet, two feet, two and a half might be a little high. I'll just come a little bit low of that. That's my roughly 28 inches or so, right? Instead of two and a half feet. So again, find a vertical line. You could come out here to your box, Build your box vertical, give yourself a vertical line. Draw a straight line between the zero, zero on the floor and the base of, that, base of that box that you're building. Draw that line. You don't need to draw the whole line, you just need the intersection. So that's the diagonal vanishing point for the conference table. The vertical edge is here. Diagonal vanishing point through the 28 inch mark on the vertical measuring line is right there. So that's the height of the table in the foreground. And you're going to see that the top plane of this table practically just goes really flat. It just is what it is. You can see the far end is over here. If that was a flat plane, it would look like that. This is going to be an arc, so we're going to see more of it like a tangent up here. I could give myself a guideline up here if I want. Left vanishing point from the corner of the box comes across like that. So it hits this mark here. So I know that the end of this elliptical table 
is going to look sort of like that. And if I sketch that in, knowing my, log my rules of ellipses, you're, pretty, you're in good shape. I've got enough, my box on the floor is here. There's my box up above. Back to the right vanishing point is right there. So I know that over here there's going to be an ellipse also. And I can use my ellipse logic to sketch that in as well. So now we're getting up into the normal part of the perspective. And I would say square up your ellipse so that you go back to those minor axis vertical and major axis horizontal. Make sense? We're back into the center of the scene. So you really want that ellipse to be a little bit cleaner. The tangency of the table is here. If the table has got like a little bit of thickness, then that's about there. You could kind of figure out maybe it's got like a pedestal base, like a Saarinen table. Uh, that makes it a lot easier to sketch and draw and design. And now you've got to start to place the other chairs. The chairs on the back side are just going to, all you're going to see is the chair back. So I could start to sketch in the chair backs. There's four of them. I don't know how many are here. In the, there's five in the plan, so I can make some adjustments later. If I build those across the table from the vanishing point, I'm just eyeballing to my right vanishing point now. I can see where the chairs in the foreground are going to be also, right? There may be the chair back right there, and I can start to sketch in the chair, right? Okay? Make sense? So the space is coming together very, very quickly. I think we did this drawing in about half an hour or so. It's pretty rough still, but it gives you all the structure. Now you can actually start designing and making some critical choices about what you're putting in and what you're gonna, how you're going to articulate your, plane, your ceiling or your wall planes. If you want to make a, an arched ceiling, you might start to think about, oh, I might raise the ceiling up here and create an arched, arcing ceiling. As we get over to the vanishing point, the arcs are flattening out and arcing in the opposite direction a little bit like that. If we want to do a recessed ceiling or a step-down ceiling or a cove, I can just build off of this and build down or upward as I need to. If I want to build columns or, or beams coming across the space, then maybe I work off of these columns that are already in here and I come down some amount and I just start to build in what looks like a beam coming across the ceiling plane. So if you have more of an industrial space or a converted industrial space from uh, you know converted uh, industrial building into, into lofts, you might have exposed beams kind of like that, right? And those could come across the scene and I could build out from this plane also. Well, jumping ahead, jumping around a little bit. Let me carry this same geometry from the left side of left beam, left column, over to the right beam. So now I know the, the, the height of that beam on the right side of the scene. And then I can come out from my right vanishing point. The same corresponding beam, beam on this side of the scene would be really, really flat to our eye, but there it is coming out towards us. So this is the underside of that beam. And I would put wood grain in there if it's like an industrial beam. And this is the vertical plane of the beam. There we go, running, off and running. <laughs> www.studiolafort.com. <laughs>